country is getting bigger, it's expanding. We're talking cities, states. You need to know what's inside. So do I. Hi folks, I'm Ignati Vishnevetsky. And I'm Alex Dowd. Today we're talking about Annihilation, the new sci-fi film from Alex Garland. Welcome to Film Club. So Alex Garland first made his reputation as a screenwriter. He wrote 28 Days Later for Danny Boyle, wrote Sunshine, also for Danny Boyle, wrote the novel that I think boils the beach. Right, he started in, uh, in literature. He was, yeah. he was a novelist before he was a filmmaker. So. And then he made his debut with Ex Machina, mm -hmm. a film that a lot of people like. Very much a, a, a kind of classic bit of sci-fi. Mm -hmm. And this is a film on a slightly larger scale, mm -hmm. though I, he's a little less interested in, I think, the ideas behind uh, behind the premise than... than See, I think there's a very clear idea in this mm -hmm. one. I, I think with, with Ex Machina, one of the things that kind of bugged me about that was that I think it had some provocative ideas that never really gelled into any kind of particular... It's any larger notion. I think it was just kind of dealing with desire and gender and mm -hmm. creation. Whereas I think this actually kind of has a maybe even too clear of an idea by the end of what it's really about. But the guy does not know how to end a story. I had yeah. the, the same problem here as I've had with... I think almost everything he's written in, maybe to a greater degree. I actually didn't, I, I was shocked by, by how underwhelmed I was. Well, but I think normally what happens is that he sort of constructs these hard sci-fi premises where he's going to get into, you know, the, the ideas and his movies sort of rope you in with this sense of mystery. And then it turns into a monster chase. It turns into a slasher movie sometimes, you know? And I wished the whole film, I was sitting there waiting, wishing, like, why can't this turn into a, a this, well, the that third act of a Garland film faster? That sort of pulpier aspect is woven through the whole film. I spent most of this movie thinking that I was sort of watching Forbidden Planet by way of Solaris or something. Yeah, you know? I mean, there's, there's a, 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 an obvious visual lift from Stalker. Stalker is yeah. really, I think, the bigger Tarkovsky yeah. sci-fi point of reference because what's, what's the premise here? There's a meteor that crashes into the Earth, mm -hmm. um, into a, a lighthouse, uh, and it creates this thing that's basically like the zone from Stalker sort called of. the Shimmer, which yeah. it's, it's an ever expanding area somewhere in Florida. Mm -hmm. It's been there for three years. Mm -hmm. uh, the government has kept it a secret. These characters are just the latest team to go in. Mind you, no one has actually successfully returned right. with the exception of the main character's husband. The main character is played by Natalie Portman. Yes. She's a biologist from Johns Hopkins who is presumed that her husband uh, who's in special forces or something, that he died until he suddenly shows up unexpectedly at her house, yeah. which is how she gets dragged into this whole conspiracy to cover up the existence of, of this thing, the Shimmer. So you have them sort of trekking into the Shimmer, this mutated Florida landscape, essentially, where the flora and the fauna is, is sort of rapidly changing around them. And I think that it, it operates a lot like a, a kind of action horror conceit that's been given the, the sort of weight and pretension of... Uh, that's been given like a really serious <laughs> injection of sedatives because this film has very long pauses between lines of dialogue. And if you cut it out, it would be, I'm mean, seriously, there's like 45 minutes of a movie here. If everyone wasn't pausing before there's they say very, anything or do I think, anything. I think that you're denying that there's some very nightmarish moments in this film. There is a monster in this, unlike anything that I've seen in a movie before, except that it does remind me a little bit of an H.R. Geiger creation. Yeah. But uh, there's, there's a conceit about it in the way that it communicates that is, uh, very nightmarish, I thought. There's some of the imagery in this, I think, is much stronger than the imagery in Ex Machina. But I never really felt a sense of danger. I think the, the doom is so predetermined here that I just, I had a really hard time feeling any urgency. They do really interesting things in showing us kind of what the shimmer is like without overdoing it. One mm -hmm. of those things, for instance, are the lens flares, which <laughs> obviously are something that movies tend to use very fetishistically, but he actually uses them in a very purposeful way because they uh, reflect in a really funny way. It sort of makes you understand that the light is passing through something, you know, as it's on the way through a window. There's always, uh, there's, everything has kind of like a purplish cast around it at the edges. I think he's doing a lot of things interesting um, in terms of the staging. I think that there's a lot of tactics that he's using for disorientation purposes. Mm -hmm. You know, you have characters who are sort of, uh, who are fundamentally disoriented in this environment. And the movie is kind of mirroring that occasionally with, with the choices. That first scene between her and uh, Jennifer Jason Lee is so oddly directed. I mean, there's these, there's a lot of mismatched eye lines, and I think that he's doing these kind of things to kind of uh, 
to kind of create this general sense of disorientation. But you don't feel like everyone in this film is like looks like they're they just came back from a funeral. I mean, I think part <laughs> it's a of a dour movie for sure. It's incredibly dour. I, I absolutely agree with you there. Uh, and the acting is not as strong in this film. I think partially because of uh, all the characters are sort of, sort of being demanded to behave in this sort of sub subdued, distant way. Even Portman's character, who we, we don't necessarily even get a really good beat on for most mm -hmm. of the movie, she's because she has this kind of scientific remove to her through most of the. Film. Film. And uh, but I, I do appreciate how go for broke this this gets uh, in in some of its final minutes. You say that you think that he always botches the ending. I don't. I, perhaps that's true here too, in in its own way, in that this doesn't pay off some of uh, some of the, the the sort of promise and possibility of its big sci-fi conceit. I still think that the, just the sheer, uh, the sort of sheer audience antagonizing weirdness of the final few minutes is at least something to behold. It's destroying everything. It's not destroying. It's making something new. 